Welcome to The Conspiracy Show. My name is Richard Serrett. Our modern electronics, like computers, wireless internet, routers, and cell phones, causing cancer and other illnesses? Scientists estimate that our daily exposure to EMF radiation is 100 million times higher than it was in our grandparents' time. Some researchers and scientists claim that cell phones interfere with pacemakers, that developing skulls of children are penetrated deeply by the energy emitted from a cell phone, that the blood-brain barrier, which prevents invasion of the brain from toxins, can be compromised by the cell phone radiation. And most startling, that radio frequency radiation creates micronuclei in human blood cells, a type of genetic damage known to be a diagnostic marker for cancer. The general scientific consensus is that thus far the evidence available is weak and not sufficient to establish a definitive cause-effect relationship. So who do we believe? Tonight we'll meet an expert in the biological effects of environmental contaminants, a former police officer who's campaigning to have wireless internet removed from public spaces including schools a former real estate broker who has been diagnosed with electrical sensitivity and had her entire home gutted to make it EMF free. And of course, we'll hear from a skeptic, an expert in occupational and environmental health, who says that the people who claim EMF radiation is dangerous are engaging in hyperbolic pseudoscientific nonsense. Me? I just want the truth, and I'm willing to follow it wherever it may lead. It is time to redefine reality. Genetic enigma or a human alien hybrid. That's how cynical I am now about the process. Mainstream media, technology, you can tell whether we know or it is to make it. Has been engineered by the Illuminati. Dr. Magda Havis is a professor of environmental and resource studies at Trent University where she teaches and researches the biological effects of environmental contaminants. Dr. Magda Havis, welcome to The Conspiracy Show. Thank you, Richard. What is EMF? What does it stand for? EMF stands for electromagnetic fields, and that includes uh, radiation that includes cell phones, cordless phones, wireless routers, all of the wireless technology we use. It includes electricity and power lines, the radiation that comes from your computers. It also includes things like sunlight, ultraviolet radiation, and even ionizing radiation, x-rays, uh, radon, that sort of thing. So it's ubiquitous. We're literally swimming in EMF. That's right. We're exposed to both natural sources and man-made sources. Are the man-made sources dangerous? Well, that's what a lot of scientists contend, that they are dangerous. The man-made sources are totally artificial and they're at frequencies that don't exist normally on the planet. And we're increasing our exposure by all of the electrical devices that we use in the wireless technology. And there's a growing number of people who are becoming quite ill. I'm a retired police officer, and um, I've become quite knowledgeable about electromagnetic radiation and the health effects it has on people. I've been diagnosed with environmental sensitivities. The medical community has a great difficulty understanding this problem and they don't want to say for sure that it's electrical. Oops. It's a radio frequency meter and now normally that's you. That's, that's you me. With your, your microwave radiation from your uh, but what is it measuring megahertz it's or measuring microwatts per square meter of microwave radiation and that's the type of device that a lot of people have in their homes it's radiating 24 hours a day so martin tell me about this scope meter what is what is this actually doing it's reading all this high-frequency pollution that's actually riding on that wire. This is considered non-ionizing radiation though, is it not? That's correct. So, 
I've always been led to believe that non-ionizing radiation is not harmful. Well, you just have to look at the scientific research and you'll find that there's so many biological effects from it that it is very harmful. Industry who, that's making a lot of money on this, we're talking about billions if not trillions of dollars globally, they obviously don't want this, anyone to believe that this is harmful because there are going to be lawsuits. Where are the government officials that are supposed to be protecting us, uh, that are supposed to be setting the standards? What happened? Well, standards are set by an international organization called ICNRP. This particular um, group of scientists uh, has a lot of industry and military scientists on board. So they're the ones giving the advice as to what those guidelines should be. The Interphone study reported that there's an 80% increase in brain tumors after 1,640 hours of use. And that's very low use in today's society. So what this means is if, if we continue to use cell phones the way that we're using them, which is basically holding them up to the head, we are going to have an epidemic of brain tumors among younger and younger people. So this is a very disturbing trend. I don't have any particular self-interest or, or special interest or vested interest in opposing those, those points of view, other than that to me they're illogical, they're unscientific, they're somewhat deceptive. What is EMF? That's an interesting question. It's, it's actually one of the most fundamental things that people experience and encounter. Ionizing radiation is radiation that has sufficient energy inherently in each photon to create ions in the materials that it passes through. In the case of non-ionizing radiation, there are many actual effects, but none of them are detrimental in the way that ions are in the context of biological systems and biological materials. There's so many conflicting reports out there. Help me make sense of this. On the one hand, uh, we had a couple of years ago a couple of Danish studies that said there is no a link between cell phone use and incidence of brain tumors. And then we had this report from the World Health Organization recently that says there is a link. And then the European Parliament uh, suggesting in their report uh, that uh, we, they ban uh, Wi-Fi, wireless internet in schools. What's going on? The problem is that if scientists come out and say that this is harmful, the government has to figure out how to deal with it because it's absolutely everywhere. The doctors uh, have great difficulty believing this. My, my first doctor, I took uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, scientific information with me and I said, this is what's happening to me and uh, can, you, can you help me? And uh, I don't think the doctor even looked at the information. I, she didn't want to, uh, to get involved. Industry who, that's making a lot of money on this, we're talking about billions if not trillions of dollars globally, they obviously don't want this, anyone to believe that this is harmful because there are going to be lawsuits. I think the industry uh, representatives um, or the industry-funded studies are done with the best of intentions. There is a lot of scientific evidence that relates high-frequency pollution, radio frequencies, electromagnetic fields with various different types of cancer. If it was just based on pure science, I think everything would be much clearer, but there's a lot of politics involved and there's a lot of economics involved as well, trying to show that this radiation isn't harmful. And indeed, many of the studies that are showing no harmful effect are funded by industry. So there's al already a preconceived bias uh, to show that the technology is safe. Dr. Havis, what would you say to the other doctors or researchers out there, scientists, who don't agree with you? who might suggest to you you're being alarmist or paranoid. Well, you know, the same thing was said about Rachel Carson when she mentioned that DDT was killing wildlife. The same thing was mentioned about Selikoff when he talked about asbestos and how deadly it was. I mean, we have had these toxins over and over again from cigarettes to lead to, you know, a lot of them. And the people who say, excuse me, there's something wrong with this, we need to change, uh, are often classified as fear mongers. I would say she is looking at the same information that every scientist or every person who chooses to look sees. And uh, all I can say is that I disagree with the conclusions that she comes to. 
that, I, you know, that, that states it fairly and bluntly. I think they just don't want to change for whatever reason, whether they want to continue using the technology or because they're making money off of the technology uh, or because their research it would contradict the research that they're doing and they have their egos at, at stake involved in this. Um, there's all sorts of reasons why they might not agree with me. But if they read the science, it's so obvious that this radiation is harmful. It comes from animal studies, it comes from human studies, that if we simply ignore this, it will be at our peril. I remember one night up in bed I was having like these seizures in my head, like this electric type current as if I was getting zapped by lightning or something. It was always in the same place in the occipital area and so I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't get like this. Lucy Sanford considers herself to be a victim of EMF. She says she was forced to quit her job and move after a diagnosis confirmed she was essentially allergic to electromagnetic fields. I was a real estate agent for 24 years in Toronto, uh, lots of cell phone use. I became electrically hypersensitive. It took me a long time to know what was wrong with me. You know, I kept going to doctors with different complaints and, and they kept saying, well, we can't find anything. You know, here's some, take some antidepressants. <laughs> this radiation seems to affect our ability to think. A lot of them have headaches. Some of them have migraine headaches, uh, which just debilitates them completely. Headaches, when it would be like I was in a uh, sauna, I'd be sweating so badly. And it was all from the, the, the effects of this radiation that was coming into the house. I think when it started for me, if I really try and think back to what it was, I was just always really exhausted. Like I couldn't, hard to get out of bed and it, it, an overwhelming sensation of um, anxiety. Very often they have difficulty sleeping. That's one of the early symptoms. So they have a very restless night. I remember one night, up in bed I was having like these seizures in my head, like this electric type current as if I was getting zapped by lightning or something. It was always in the same place in the occipital area and so I, I couldn't sleep. I could get like this. My body would feel as if it was vibrating, mostly when I was uh, in bed sleeping. Some experience incredible levels of anxiety to the, to the point where they have heart palpitations. There were heart palpitations. I had extreme pressure and pain in my chest. And we can initiate an irregular heartbeat or a very rapid heartbeat simply by exposing them to the radiation from a cordless phone. I, I, I've taken part in scientific studies conducted by Dr. Magda Havis from Trent University. And what her uh, measurement showed was that when I was exposed to microwave radiation, my heart rate changed dramatically. As soon as the signal was turned on, and without me knowing about this, my heart would double immediately. And when she turned the meter off, it went back to normal. A number of them become depressed, whether the depression is directly related to the exposure or simply related to their ill health by this time. It finally got so bad, I had to leave. It was just at a point of, I didn't know what to do, so I left my life <laughs> I came out to Crystal Beach. And over time, if they continue to be exposed, those symptoms get worse and worse and worse to the point where they can no longer function in society. Do you think electrical sensitivity is an actual disorder? Uh, from the reports I've seen, uh, my, uh, what, my, my, my opinion is that it's not. Again, though, the Tony Mootses of the world would say it's non-ionizing, therefore it's not dangerous. Is that pretty much their argument? Well, you asked. Tony Mutz to put, a, put microwave devices around his home at a half of what the uh, government says is safe and let's see if he's alive in another two years time. I have no problems with my grandchildren using the microwave oven or my wife, my own kids, etc. I would say to Tony Mux, show us one good scientific study which shows that microwave radiation is safe 
and does not cause any biological effects. And I don't believe there's one study of that type which is relevant and which is a, a solid study. Yet there are thousands of studies which show that there are significant biological effects. It's a ludicrous idea to put Wi-Fi in schools. You're basically putting wireless transmitters, converting the classroom into a microwave oven at very low power. That's what we're doing. And children are very, very sensitive to this radiation. I'm very concerned about the rate of cancers that, that are going to develop in the future for these children. Even if I don't use a cell phone, I'm surrounded. I'm probably at any one time no further than several hundred meters from a cell phone tower. If I don't use a cell phone, am I still at risk? We are inundated with this radiation, so it makes little difference whether you use a cell phone or, or not. What that means is that if you're living in a high-rise apartment building, if you're living in the middle of a city like Toronto, you are just bombarded with this radiation. People who have developed a sensitivity cannot go into these communities anymore. They can't live in high-rise apartment buildings. They can't go to hotels and, and stay on the top floor because there's simply too much radiation there for them. We did some things to make it safe. We put Stetzer filters in which reduced the dirty electricity and stuff. I had to bury the cable overhead and build a trench. That was about $6,000 and that would include moving the smart meter to the edge of the property. The electrical, I use BX cable wiring, so it's shielded in the thing so it doesn't come out of the, of the wall. So that's industrial wiring, that's much more expensive to three times the cost of regular wiring. I have on-demand switches. So what this means is when I turn on this light, for example, when, it, when I turn it off, it doesn't turn it off here, it turns it off at the panel in the basement. So when I go to bed at night, there's no electricity on around me. Instead of holding the cell phone to your head, one of the things you can do is buy one of these gizmos where you plug this into your cell phone and you talk on it just like you would a regular phone. So the cell phone is down on the table and you just uh, have a private conversation and this protects you against the radiation from that phone. So if you're in a multi-unit building, if your neighbors have the, these technologies, you're going to be exposed. If you're living near a cell tower or broadcast antenna, you're going to be exposed. So you can put curtains on your windows, you can put film on your windows that will actually reflect the radiation. There is clothing people have that they can wear to protect their bodies. So if you absolutely have to keep your cell phone in your hip pocket, you can have underwear that reflects this radiation. It's lined with silver and it simply repels the radiation so your body isn't absorbing it. I found that the only thing I can really do to protect myself is to avoid the radiation and uh, keep away from it as much as I can, which is very difficult to do these days because it's been installed in so many different places. Wi-Fi in the schools, I'm guessing, horrible idea. Oh, it, it's a ludicrous idea to put Wi-Fi in schools. You're basically putting wireless transmitters, converting the classroom into a microwave oven at very low power. That's what we're doing. And children are very, very sensitive to this radiation. I'm very concerned about the rate of cancers that, that are going to develop in the future for these children. But I'm even more concerned about how it's going to affect their ability to reproduce. Because we're not talking about just this generation, we're talking about generation after generation after generation. Well, I, th I think it's criminal that schools are allowing this technology to, to be put in the schools. I think it's totally wrong. Um, there are studies which indicate that um, when children start to, or young people start to use cell phones at an early age, their rates of brain cancer are increased by at least four times. People have suggested time and again, and there are indications from time to time that there may be something there, but it hasn't been established scientifically to the point where uh, it's considered to be a reliable conclusion. EMF, electromagnetic fields. They're everywhere, they're silent, but are they deadly? Are ubiquitous cell phone towers, wireless internet routers, microwave ovens, even baby monitors putting us and our children at risk? Quite frankly, there is so much seemingly contradictory information out there, it's easy to feel like you're lost in the electronic smog. 
On the one hand, the World Health Organization recently reclassified radio frequency radiation from wireless devices as possibly causing cancer. On the other hand, we have a couple of Danish studies that found no link between cell phone use and the incidence of brain tumors. Having reviewed the literature, it is concluded, and it's a, an obvious fact if you review the literature, that there are some indications with some studies that there may be a, a risk of carcinogenesis with uh, electromagnetic fields in general, let's say. But I would say rather than leap to the conclusion that now we need to ban cell phones, we should look at the list of possible carcinogens that IARC has. And if you look at the list of possible carcinogens, coffee is one of them, for example. You need to get busy and start doing the research so that you can make an informed decision about whether electromagnetic fields pose a serious health risk, whether Wi-Fi belongs in your child's school, or whether you should continue using your microwave oven. I can only tell you what I'm doing. I've decided to err on the side of caution. The cordless phone in our home is gone. I shut off my wireless internet once I'm off to bed and I'm seriously considering getting rid of our wireless router altogether. My wife and I are considering getting rid of the microwave and we're looking at getting an earbud and mic for all our cell phones, which we use sparingly. And now, I'd like to know what you think. You can contact me through the website www.theconspiracyshow.com In the meantime, don't be afraid. <laughs>